Let's go into pick some bands for game two and see if we can pull something out here. If LG can find this win, they will guarantee themselves four seed this season and guarantee themselves a prize money. You don't have to worry about denial. Try to sneak some of that away from them. Envy, first pick, first ban. And Thor going to get banned away from Anister, known to be playing very efficiently with that Thor. Whenever you're looking for the speed buff as well, you always have to be on the lookout for the Thor. So Envy not going to have to deal with that. Also, Sarno, LG going to ban that one away as well. They don't want to deal with it from the side of Envy, and they won't get a chance to win themselves. This time, though, they will ban the Nemesis, because clearly Anister's Nemesis pretty strong. I wouldn't mind seeing Andy go back to his Hercules. He likes running it now and again, especially ranked. He does like that. Sometimes he'll even go solo lane Hercules just to keep it fresh. Keep you know, it fresh. Just keep it in the back pocket, just yeah, in case. Just in case. Alquain going to get banned away from Cyclone. Spend the, leaving a lot of mages open right now. Raijin's open. Giannis is open. Or you could potentially go for the Athena Global. It's going to be Raijin in the mid lane this time for Stealth, but I this is up again this time round, and will we see Bush go back to it? More than likely not, because against the Ryzen specifically, the Ryzen will counter your wing gust by just dashing into you and the messing crash. you. Yeah. Well, Ho Yi locks in again for Barracuda, and Jeff Hanlon more than likely going to be on that Athena, so same dual lane coming out here from LG. Will Envy's dual lane of TV and Dust have an answer back to this? Because they went with the unmastered Jing Wei. Uh, this time round, we see a Jing 10. I like the idea that Luminosity have uh, picking up their dual lane right away right now. Having the safety net wherever Barracuda wants to 1v1 Dust, he's always going to have Jeff Hill on the backhand side to bail him out if ever needed. And Dust is going to pick up the on her, trying to find maybe a 1v1 boxing potential. He is rank 9 on her. That's what he's done. He's gone for the rank 0 Jingwei, rank 9 on her play. Rank 9, Master greater nine. than 1, or it greater is. than 0, It's I greater guess. than 0, of course yes. it is. Zeus locked in for LG, Boosh, like you said, not going to go for the Isis, we'll go for the Zeus option instead for the mid lane, so great combination of the Torn, Fire, Sun, so the Suns from Hoi, as well as the Zeus ultimate, to combine nicely together. Counterban is coming through now, and LG with the first option, they'll take off a Wheelix. Now the difference between the last game and this game compared to, is the fact that the Zeus is going to be paired up with the Athena, whereas the last game, the Zeus was against the Athena. It's a lot more difficult to survive as a Zeus when you're dealing with an Athena. Nijar banned out by L. Sorry, by MV. No, don't want it. They're just going to focus jungle bands against MV the whole time here. Would you expect the last one to be Humbats? There's a lot of options. Circuit is actually banned, so there's a lot of jungles okay. off of the table. Ban Humbats and... LG pick Hercules jungle. There you go. Ohibo. An Anister can easily run Thanatos. Isis here. jungle. Jiffy did it in EU. Isis jungle. Now that's a that's an EU thing. It's just an EU that's thing. That's an EU jungle. I no. really hope Andy picks it now just to put you wrong. I, I could easily see the Thanatos pick here coming out of Ooh. Luminosity. He does run it every now and then. And especially paired up with Zeus, that can easily put somebody in the execute threshold for Thanatos. Ool for LG. So could be jungle. Jungle? jungle? Yeah. Jungle. He's, he has run it. Is it called Jungle? Jungle. Jewel. Ooh. Jewel. Ooh. Oh, that's not too bad. You almost sound Scandinavian there, Tully. That wasn't too bad from you. Oh, could be the jungle. It could be Boosh in mid lane. Could be Zeus jungle. We'll find out. Arachne in response from Envy going over to Cyclone Spin. This seems to be the game plan from both junglers of what the heck is left for us to pick. And the final pick for Envy this game to go along with that Jing Ten, which could be solo or support, will be the mana. I'm saying. Well, Envy is recognizing that it is more than likely going to be the Uller in the jungle, so picking the Arachne, trying to isolate somebody in that position. We have a Thanatos. This could be Thanatos actually support. Arachne solo lane right now for Kiki. No, Kiki. it's not. No, it's not. It's Thanatos support. No, it's Xing Chen support. Xing Chen solo. No, no, no. Thanatos no, 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 support. no, no, no. You don't no, like no, that? No, no. It's Xing Chen support <laughs> with on her. Okay. And then it's going to be Arachne solo with Thanatos jungle. Okay, I mean, well, to be fair, Arachne is female, and that's what Kiki loves. Kiki loves Arachne. He loves the girls. Bologna is the last pick for Scary D over in the solo lane there. Now, going to be picking up the Raven this time around because he's not sure what he's against at the moment. Good compositions from both in terms of craziness. Where is Ul going? Who is the jungler for LG? We'll find out because this game should be very, very entertaining, to say the least. I can't wait to see what's going to the solo lane for Envious. We also know Ionic is back in this game, and you'll see him on the screen as well. He's playing the Jing Ten with Dust. It's going to be Andy in the jungle on... Jewel. I'm going to call him Jewel. I called all those lanes for Envious right there. God, you're so good, Tully. It's like you're a caster. It's like I'm a caster. It's like you're a caster. Whoa. What's going on? Uh, an analyst? What do you want to be known as? Former pro player? Well, Former got solo by game. I'm, I'm thinking of a word that's like a hybrid between Former the three. used to play Ymir in solo lane and then lose games. Former got benched multiple times. Uh, uh, Former washed up. You're not watching anymore because you're a caster, right? That's what we all do. We, we come here when we want to get away from all. What else do you want? There, 
right now inside, I'm internally screaming multiple tears right now. Multiple tears. <laughs> Bible thumps in chat for Tolly, guys. Invade coming out from Kiki at the start of this game, trying to deny an instant scary D taking this buff. Uh, doesn't have Wrath available, but Kiki just trying to show his face and go, they see me, they see me. Does he get it? I think he got it. No, it doesn't look like no, he got he it. No, he did it. No. Kiki, and uh, no. he's actually in a lot of trouble now because Anister had does have speed buff, so he has to be careful. As it looks like Psycho Spin just going to find the slow. Did get the right side uh, mid harpies, however, but it's going to definitely favor Luminosity moving forward. I uh, don't know if it was worth so much. They get right Harpies, left Harpies now going to go the way of Envy as well as Cyclone's there with MLC Stealth. Kiki going to go into lane at level 1 up against a Bologna. Bologna versus Arachne in lane, Tolly. No, this is not the matchup that you want right now. If you're envious, you should have waited to see. If you wanted the Arachne in the solo lane specifically, you needed to ban out the Bologna in the third, fourth, because that's the one matchup you don't want to deal with as Arachne. You could, you're going to get scourged every time you use your Death Bite for your sustain earlier on, or you could get Shield Bash as well to absorb that. Well, Joel's going to come mid lane as Dust jumps away from the duo lane pressure from Jeff Henler and Barracuda yet again. Ionic is back with him, and now we can color the first Blood Prince again because he's got Ionic back with him, okay? So we figure Give him for the last game. TV's not as good as Ionic. We all know that. No offense to TV. But Dusty's now back with his usual lane partner. First Blood Prince is here. And it's rank 9 on her. Yeah, rank 9. Not zero mastery Jingwei. No, so he's definitely in a good position moving forward in the rest of the laning phase. As the mid lane, Envious was able to clear out first because of the back right Harpies that was taken by Luminosity. Oh, look at the pressure coming out from Envy, though. They're trying to rotate around hard left here, but Luminosity called it out in the jungle there. Scythe off the mark from Cyclone there. Wasn't be able to find it, and Andy just going to pressure them out with the threat of an axe to the back of the head. And now Anister is currently one level ahead of Cyclone Spin, so they should be able to take advantage of that, clearing the midway first potentially and doing a lot of damage. Oh, a lot of damage onto Stealth there for free. The axe connects as well. The burst is good. The detonate is better. First blood on onto Stealth comes out from the bush. And with that momentum, they're going to go ahead and go do their own back right left harpies. They're going to be able to get level 5 off that, and they could look for more plays in the mid lane right now. Off of that death, uh, the purification was used as well. Kiki taking a lot of damage in the solo lane. Can sustain this back up though once again, once these minions are here, to be able to continue to poke it down. Has to clear the back ones because they're worth gold still. You'll get a couple, but he's going to lose a couple to the tower. And that's something that, because of the matchup right now, it's favoring Scarity. He loves to play aggressive, and he has the winning matchup. He has the AoE clear. He has the prevention to get poked every time that Death Spike comes out. Even, it didn't connect on top of Scarity, but even if it did, the sustain from Bologna would have also been just as good to keep up with Kiki early on. Well, those webs do slow the minions down for a minute, but he still means he's going to lose a couple of creeps to the tower. Dual lane is being pressured here by Envy. They're looking for aggression here. The raw comes out. The whirlwind of death and rage and steel onto Jeff. The impale in the wall from the first play prunts is good, but can he find the kill? No, the ricochet's better. He's leaping in place. Under the tower he goes. The shell is better. And Jeff Hindler annihilates the first blood prince for a second time in two games. He wanted to find the kill so badly that he even jumped and using the purification just to be able to look for the opportunity. Maybe finding a knockback back into a Yannick. However, Yannick recognized that there was no kill potential, so a little bit of a miscommunication. Yannick just sat there going, man, I miss Snoopy. Yeah. Man, I miss Snoopy right now. And Dust is like, where's my team? Where's my team, please? Why don't you follow me in? Pulling Cyclone, I'm going to steal the red buff away, though, from the jungle of LG here, just to get some gold back on his side and continue farming up. And he has some aggression available to him on this Thanatos if he can find a play, especially on the mid lane. I mean, Zeus very, very squishy, very open to being picked off, potentially, by this Thanatos. And Ryzen could potentially bait himself and allow Cyclone Spin to come back forward if Stealth finds the aggressive dash. Ooh. Kiki's going to have to ulti away just to survive. Scary D still having his ultimate. He needs to be careful about going back. Because, oh, that's what that I was thought a was That was Kiki such a that well. That was a very good mind game coming out of Kiki. <laughs> Kiki, because it looked like he was going to jump on those minions. If he did, Bologna was right on top of the Eagles Rally. Scary D fell for the bait. Ult for ult. Doesn't work out too bad. Teleport is available as well for Kiki to come back. So even though he's having trouble in the early game, he's still good at the mind games in old Kiki. And that's what solo lane is a lot about. You have to have those mind games anyway, because like if you force an ulti like that in that situation, at least you got something out of yeah. it in return. You know, you lose your ultimate just to be able to survive. However, you still got the enemy to use their ultimate. Well, good news is this time around, Envy will get their own speed buff and red buff on the first rotation of them respawning. No invasion from LG at the moment. I guess that's down to having an old jungle as well. Kind of relieves a little bit of pressure on aggression. With the rotation from Jeff Hiller here, they were able to clear the midway first, and they're looking for an aggressive play around the 
speed buff and well, the blue buff. He has no ultimate to escape this one and no purification to avoid the taunt means Scary D will pick himself up a kill thanks to Jeff Hindler's good play. And now speed buff has been taken. Looks like he went on to Ionic. Cyclosman wasn't able to pick that up. And Andy? Anister's coming from the backhand side. Stealth doesn't have that much mana right now. He gets hit by a Scythe. Cyclone says, come on, Andy, calm down. You're not going to find a kill against three of us in mid lane with just you and Zeus here, especially because Jeff's still on the right. But Jeff pressuring with Scary D on that right hand side of the solo lane tower. They could potentially get some free poke off onto it. Instead, they're just going to back to base as Barra versus Dust is still continuing in duo. They found the pick onto Kiki. They found his blue buff as well. Scary D now has a two level advantage as a result. And they're going to have to find some sort of capitalization on a different side of the map if you're envious right now. It has to be the dual lane right now as Barracuda is left alone. Jeff Hiller doesn't have his ultimate available to bail him out if Barracuda does get dove. Yannick staying in this lane very, very heavily with Dust as well. Both equal level though, both level sevens at the moment. Even Jeff's doing a good job. They're going to return into the jungle. There's nothing available for them to steal, unfortunately. Cold Fury is available and, and her early game is pretty strong, but it's just not an opportunity yet. It's not an opportunity. Yeah, he is a level behind Barracuda right now because Ionic is sharing a lot of waves with him right now as the Athena constantly rotates. Scary D just training out a little bit with Kiki right now. And the bludgeon good and on the mark again. Kiki tried to avoid it and has to ult again. Don't think he's going to go for the ult bait this time round. Instead, he's just going to disengage. Head back to base. And now his teleport is down for 55 seconds. I like what Kiki's uh, doing here. He's not backing on purpose, lingering around the corner. Scary D doing the same thing. However, he could find the ult. He's going to kill it on his head. Bludgeon down. GG, Scary D. That's Finds the mind kill, games. Lose the whole wave. That's the mind game. So Kiki wanted to not back and hope that Scary D would back. And Scary D knew that was going to happen and didn't. We goes. Good old Scary D into an awkward word of hurt, and Ionic just says, come on, lad, calm down. You're not going to get away from that one. Ionic's rotation on point. Talk about rotations. Cyclone spin looking at duo, but Dust gave the game away by how far through those minions he just ran looking to try and pressure them. In that situation, that's a huge tell right now. When you're ignoring, clearing the wave, and you're going past the mini wave, there's a reason. Obviously, Anonymous is not going to just go into a team fight 1v2 unless he has backup coming. Well, Cyclone took a lot of free poke on the chain line and actually bounced onto Dust and Barracuda wants to fight. But Dust denies it with a very good impale to disengage it, but Cyclone going to take to the sky, look around, go straight in on Barracuda, who's used the leap. But the Suns were ready, and Cyclone's in trouble. The ricochet was good. And if we can find Jeff, charge around here with a charge and reach, they'll find the kill, but they'll give it to Barracuda. Barra will get it, and now Dust surrounded and bludgeoned by Scary D, who made a teleport rotation. Nice rotation from Scary D, and with those two picks, Luminasi should be able to find the goal here. Anister might be in a little bit of trouble. Force the purification. He's going to fall with Kiki. Andy falls for the second person on LG to die this game. The tier one tower under pressure, but three members of LG are here. Ionic going to up and down Boosh into place, but the support from the taunt is good. Ionic surrounded. Bludgeon is on the mark. Eagles rally just off, but the detonate was there. And now Kiki not... Kiki's going to be able to use his ultimate just to disengage. I highly doubt they're going to commit without MLC stealth. Well, they ultimate. are coming in, and they're going to find Boosh, that's for sure. Now the Bludgeon's coming out, and Stealth's in trouble after the Thunder crash in. Stealth will fall in trade. Kiki's still trying to poke down Jeff Hindler, but Jeff's tanky enough to survive it. And Kiki just going to have to stand here a minute and be like, well, guys, we got a couple. And now with a two-level disparity, Kiki not having any physical defense, trying to rush into the Ichival, whereas the Bologna does have a little bit of physical defense, so should be able to win any sort of trades in that matchup. Right hand side though, Cyclone going to take the blue buff for himself and just drop it down for Kiki to be able to pick up so he doesn't lose any experience there and actually go back to his old stomping grounds of the solo lane. Here. He's also run Thanatos in the solo lane before, so this is not something new. If we see a jungle switch up between the two right now, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Cyclone's been having to catch up in levels compared to Innister. But also, sorry, Kiki's in the same boat, though. He's two levels down now. Cyclone under pressure. The axe hits his head. He's got it all to weigh. Doesn't get a chance to because the bludgeon and the rain of arrows were just on the mark. Just beautiful execution from Luminosity, chaining the CC and the damage, allowing the damage to just be able to execute before the Thanatos could even land or no. go there. Kiki under pressure again. Has no ultimate to get away, and I don't think Andy recognizes that. If he did, he'd still keep going in. Worried about the poke coming out from Kiki. Very low on Manu is and Insta right now, trying to show off his Haunter play in the jungle here. Looking for an axe if he can find onto Kiki. Kiki just sustaining himself back up. And then he's just going to return to farming. And it looks like there's going to be not a rotation from the right shot. I thought he was about to rotate, but he's just going to do his back right harpies. And it's just going to go ahead and back off. As Scary D is still going to continue to box Kiki. Still has the blue buff available, Kiki. So he does have enough mana just for his ultimate at the moment. Kiki just quite happy to farm up mid lane still. Jeff combining with the boost just to push in mid lane. Cyclone spin back here at level 9. It's still a level down in Anister, but doing a good job of trying to catch up as much as he can, even if he's putting the deficit of his team behind. 
something that Envious has to do right now is look for any sort of opportunity. If you are pushing the mid wave right now, they're going to be able to play aggressive in this situation. They have a 3v1 against the Athena, but they didn't want to commit under the tier 1 mid tower. Dust is waiting for the rotation from Barracuda. Might find a potential impale against the wall and maybe winning a trade post. Well, Mark of the Crow gives the game away. Ricochet after Mark and Dust stands there. Leaps on his face. Going to find the impale as well. Doesn't go back into the wall, but the trade is going well. Desert Fury out. Barra recognizes it. Leaps back into the jungle to safely. Dust wants to continue chasing though. Throws the pillar to slow him down. No support from anybody. This is a man fight. Barra going to use the wall. Gets the Mark of the Crow for vision. And Barra recognizes he could be in trouble here. It's actually Dust. He's overextended now. And he could get collapsed if he's not careful. And Barracuda's doing a good job Cyclone. baiting right Cyclone. now. Cyclone. Cyclone. Dunks in. There's Jeff coming in with the deal as well from Athena to help protect him. Barra's still alive. Dust is still far forward. Purification as well. Dust stays alive. Ionic, however, falls to Boosh and that big ultimate. And just like that, you, Scary D also finding the kill onto Cyclone Spin. Even though Dust was able to do a good job winning the trade, he kind of baited himself and the rest of his team to try to find more kills. Kiki does get away from the danger zone for a second, but Scary D is there for the landing. Got to head back into the enemy jungle again. Reach over the wall from Jeff is good. Sprint has been popped. Kiki surrounded by multiple members. Axe to the back of the head from Aninster. And there's no answer from Envy there. 12 to 3 is the tagline in favor of Luminosity. Sometimes you have to recognize when you have a winning trade and what you can do afterwards and being aggressive in the jungle in that situation was not what Envious needed. They needed to continue to farm that little bit of a trade on top of Barracuda, getting him that low, forced Barracuda out of the lane and you could have took advantage of by just controlling the rest of the wave. So Dust will pick up this full wave on this left hand side here. Still a little bit behind in terms of experience over Barracuda there. Level 11 to level 12. A speed buff taken by Envy one more time. Uh, realistically, the old jungle, I mean, he's hit a couple of axes, but has it been impactful enough as you would normally see out of a jungler? It just depends on how good the early game is, and because they found their first blood early on on top of MLC stuff, with the combination that they had, the Axe into the Zeus damage as well, was what allowed the Uller to kind of snowball just a little bit every now and then, even finding kill onto Cyclone Spin not too long ago. Well, Barracuda going aggressive on Dust in the jungle there, looking to steal away those balls if you could find them. As on the right-hand side there, you saw Scary D steal away the blue buff in the enemy jungle, but has to ult away from the danger zone of Ionic coming out with his ult in response. And now, because the fact that Scary D has the blue buff, the cooldown will be a lot shorter. Anister, very disciplined, just going to poke out MLC stuff just a little bit and disengaging, recognizing that there could have been a lot of potential I damage. I mean, well, the Gulf Fury is being done. It's going to be free as well. Dust isn't going to be there in time as Anista keeps stealth at bay. Gulf Fury goes down, and now Dust in the jungle is being pressured by two. Ricochet on the mark, but the Sanctuary was better from Dust to keep him alive. Leaps away to safety now, but there's support from Anister with the axe to the head. And Boosh will get credit for the kill as four members collapse on him. Luminous playing so well together, getting the gulf here, and then re-collapsing on Dust again. Scary D on the right-hand side lost his tower in response, but it's definitely worth it when you're getting gulf here, and you're also going to get a dual lane tower. As long as Scary D can hold this tier 2 tower, this is a very good trade. Trying to pressure him down, but he's level 15 against a level 12 and a level 11, and Scary D doesn't care about this. He's going to bludgeon Kiki in the face. He's got now support coming out from Jeff Hitler on the Athena. Kiki has to bravely run away to the tower edge of the defensive option, but his option is not a good one, because Aninster is on the way, lurking through the jungle. Kiki's trying to back safely if he can find it. But look at this Cyclone. Recognize where Anister was and dunks onto him. Kiki may actually get away from this one for now. But Cyclone, well, he's going to pay for it. He has speed buff available to him. And with his second ability, giving him a little bit of a movement speed steroid. However, with the stun from Scary D, that's going to buy enough time to kill him. Does find the kill onto him. 14 to 3, 13 minutes in. LG are starting to run away with this now. Just under 6,000 gold lead. 8,000 experience lead for the former world champions. Well, mostly world champions. After that second goal, Fury Luminosity are going to keep playing together right now as Jeff finds a nice taunt. Barracuda is going to follow up, force the Sanctuary out of stealth. Going to find the kill is Boosh and the Tier 1 Tower should fall shortly after. Yeah, Tier 1 Tower being pressured here. Scary D just going to have to back away. Minions are there though in time. Barracuda can just come in and poke that down the last little bit that's needed. Nobody else here from Envy to try and defend. And instead though, meanwhile on the right hand side, he's just starting to pressure the Tier 1 Tower. And this is just something that Luminosity can exploit right now. You have this much of a lead. You can't even win 4v5, so Anister is going to set up another Tier 1 Tower objective. Meanwhile, Jeff Hill in the mid lane, finding Kiki. Good impale from Dust there just to push him away, but Scary D now turns up, forcing him to leap back again with a full minion wave coming in. LG can look for the Tier 2 Tower now as well. Only three members here to defend. Anister gets the Tier 1 right, and is looking for the Tier 2 on the right as well. As the team still pressure in mid lane, poking it down. Jeff setting up for a taunt, looking for it. Going to find Cyclone into a Ricochet combination from Barracuda. Jeff credited with a kill. The taunts are good from Stealth though, and Stealth's going to get a lot of free poke off, but the Suns are heavy from Barracuda, and it wears off, but 
Stealth managing to pick up two kills on defense there. It was a really good ultimate from Ionic. Forced two members from Luminosity into the Phoenix range, killing Jeff Hill and Scary D. They do get the tier two tower on right hand side with Anister split pushing. Being a hunter in this position in the jungle, uh, you have to be careful if you're envious, you know, concentrating too much in the mid lane. You can see that a lot, but this is just because Luminosity su has such a demanding lead right now. They steal the speed, they steal the blue, but now they could be in a bit of trouble. And they're going to go in on Stealth there, and Stealth has to Thunder Crush away. Axe off the mark, but Around the corner is coming in Ionic, and Anister will recognize it now, has his leap available, so we'll leap away to safety. Boosh, in response, will swing round just to cover his option, make sure he has an escape route. With speed buff available to you, with your jump available, with your speed movement speed steroid available to you, there's no way Envious can catch up to Anister right now, and he's just exploiting this maneuverability that this jungle Uller actually provides for you. Well, Envy, this game, they've not surrendered just yet. They were still in this one a little bit more than they were last time round, but it's a very, very big deficit still at this stage of the game they've got a little less of the late game this time round as well I want to say I mean they had Vermont and such last game but this time if you look at that lineup it's very very early focused exactly you have two assassins coming out of your solo and your jungle right now and they weren't executed the way you would like so in this position especially against luminosity it's not looking good for Envy Jeff just looking to force purification off of dust and they find it there's the axe there's the ricochet surrounded is dust at the moment there's nothing he can do against four members of luminosity he will fall again and cyclone was like good luck my friend I We'll see you in base. He had to in that situation because there was he has no CC available to him minus the stun from his ultimate. But if he uses his ultimate to stun, he has no possible escape. So better to lose one than to lose both in that situation. Meanwhile, Envy do could take the tier one tower in the mid lane though. In response, Boosh on defense duty against both of them. He is level 16 to the level 13 and 13, but now he's got support coming out as well from Jeff. Ton onto Ionic, puts him in an awkward spot. Ionic's in a lot of trouble as the Eagles rally connects onto one, but there's a pickup for Stealth, picking up the boost there. Stealth doing a very good job. So far, so good on this ride, and is now they're trying to turn this one around. Envy, they're starting to run down Jeff Hindler. The Spiders will slow them a little bit, but Cyclone doesn't like how many members are there. Andy's going to pressure him, looking for the pickup, and we'll find it with the in-hands as Kiki then gets cleaned up because Jeff was there too. Three for one trade for Luminosity, and the way Boosh is playing right now with his second relic being Sunder right now, that could have easily been a sanctuary, and he didn't have to lose his life there, but that's just the position that you currently are in Luminosity. You know just how far ahead you are. You can play more aggressive, especially if the Raijin ever dashes at you. You can use that Sunder and try to get a lot of counter damage going off. Well, the final tier two tower falls for Envy, and only Phoenixes remain for them to defend. Just gonna have to swing mid lane and help just in case LG look to pressure it, which they're not gonna do. The Gold Fury is available for them to go and take. And it looks like they're going to head back to base, spend some of that gold in hand, and then look for the Gold Fury. And the Gold Fury was going to be very difficult for Envy to hold on to right now. They're behind 11,000 gold at the 17 minute mark. It's just not looking too good for them. Level of disparity as well. Five for Kiki, five for Cyclone Spin as well. It's very difficult for these assassins out of Envious to do anything or get in a position to even isolate anybody. Blink on Anster as well. I didn't even notice that until just now. But he's gone Blink for the Blink Axe plays to come out from the Ul, or Jewel, as we should call him. I would like to see actually a Frostbound Hammer with his Fatalis for Anister with a Blink play. Just stay in Axe Dance forever. He's four levels over this Arachnian. Quite happy to trade out, use the bow, and with support of Scary D, Kiki's going to bravely run away. But Andy's in trouble here, and Andy could get picked off by Kiki. No, Stealth will take the kill for himself. Eagles rally in place, though, from the Bologna. No, gets cancelled out before Kiki can get hit by the Bludgeon. But Boosh is here, and Boosh will take out one. He's looking for Ionic 2. Left hand side, though, we've got a bit of a man fight going on as Dust was. Wanted to go aggressive on Barracuda there, but then with support of Jeff coming out, nothing happens, and then Dust going to bravely run away from that angle. And actually, Kiki, I believe, teleported over to try and stay alive and ended up walking into Jeff Hindler, who's having a great day. 5-1 and 12 from the support. He wanted to get away from Scary D, but found trouble on the left-hand side of the map. Barracuda not finding the ricochet onto Cyclone Spin, but going to find the red buff on the left-hand side. Gold Fury is down. Phoenixes are available. The Fire Giant is available as well. And if I'm Luminosity, I'm definitely looking for that as soon as Anister responds. Not being funny if I'm a Luminosity fan, I'm probably calling Jeff Hindler the carrier of this team right now. 5 1 and 12. Barracuda's only got two kills. And like Dust was saying, first blood, you know, he's the first blood prince, right? But Jeff has soloed Dust twice. At this point in the season, normally Jeff Hindler likes to give kills, but uh. at this point in time, it's like, you know what? It's time for me to step I'm up. Gonna it's time for me. Flare. I'm going to show my income flare. I'm going to try to step it up right now. If and he did it without backers, too. I think the one thing that he's got most kills on Jeff Hendler through all the seasons is always Bacchus. He but what support doesn't have the most kills on Bacchus? Um, Kumba Karna might have more, maybe? Name a team in last place from somewhere. Any region. Any region? Yeah, I guess. 
Okay, maybe. That's generally where the back is, is the, the least kills. Actually, probably the most, because he's the only one that secures him. He's like, oh, great, it's all on the support. That doesn't help. LG pressure in mid lane here with Andy versus Stealth. Stealth, ooh, gets a good bit of poke off on Andy, and Andy did not like what he tasted there. So he's going to retreat to safety. Ooh, that blind axe to Dust, going to force the purification. Dust running forward, five, trying to find the impale. Instead, he'll find the back of Barracuda's hand as it goes through the back of his head with that arrow. Envy is just playing very aggressive right now when you're this far behind it doesn't really make much sense it seems to me they're just trying to have a little bit of fun right now more Link than anything Axe else was on the mark but the thunder crash was better he will get away stealth is they're looking for the phoenix in the mid lane here no fire giant for them no minions just yet so jeff gonna have to tank this one up nobody actually here to defend because cyclones are pushing right hand side ionic is on the left hand side and two members of envy are dead and that's something that envious has to do sometimes you just have to concede this middle phoenix to maybe get this tier two tower on the right hand side because that could potentially open up a back door potential as well depending on how many any members of Envious you have on that side of the map, and that could potentially lead them to a comeback if they could find that opportunity, which is a big if. Well, they're all trying to find Cyclone Spin in the jungle here, I think, and cover the option and try and find out exactly where he's in this right-hand side, just in case he is still over here instead. They may turn their attention to the Fire Giant. Yonic's going to turn up and find out, get taunted in place. Chain Lightning goes off him too. Ricochet connected with the Mark of the Crow, and the Detonate will confirm the kill. Another kill, the way of the Boosh. And that should be a free Fire Giant right now, unless Stealth can somehow find an ultimate available to him. Right now, it's currently down, but it needs to be up really quickly if they want to find the Dust steel. Dust wants a kill. Dust is coming with Kiki as well. They're looking for the pig. The torrent to Kiki is good. Kiki is annihilated, but Dust is still around, and they could look to try and defend the fire jump, but instead, they're going to play it safe and be very scared of the LG roster. No, Cyclone Spin right now is just stealing the red buff away, whereas Stealth and Dust are conceding the fire giant. Scary D trying to find a solo kill, potentially, or a 1v2 kill. Dust is in a lot of pressure here. The bludgeon goes off, but the Sanctuary will block it. Stealth trying to slow them down, but now he's the focus of attention with a Frostbound Hammer. How can he get away? He just used a Thunder Crash to get to the camp. Now Jeff's coming back to support as well. Both of these carries are in a lot of trouble. He has to pop his ultimate to fear him away from him. Great play from Stealth to keep him alive, but my oh my, Scary D just took out the back line as Ionic is going to throw an Insta into an awkward spot. And Ionic gets the kill. Dust will not be happy. Dust will not surrender until he gets a kill. Not at all. And meanwhile, Cyclone Spin split pushing on the left hand side left side phoenix is going to fall for envious dash on onto dust he doesn't have sanctuary available Pressure once again as the Phoenix does fall on the left. Right one has respawned Kiki. Looking for the back line for Boosh there. But Dusty took a lot of free poke from the Chain Lightning and he will fall down. Barracuda picks up Stealth as well. A scary D still pressuring Kiki, forcing him back further in the spider form. Barra though still giving chase. Got the mark of the corner of his head. The ricochet is good. This could be a dead Kiki, but under the fountain he was. The shell is popped as well just to reduce a little bit of damage from LG. Crits are on the mark and Boosh gets another kill. Chain Lightning comes off. Kiki is taking Cyclone. is one hit from Death. Ricochet misses off the mark from Barracuda there as they're still trying to farm kills as fire minions pour in this could be the end of the game LG have ended their season with a 2-0 victory by the looks of it over Envy. Unfortunately it's a little bit too late the way they've been playing this series specifically if they were to play the way they did this series earlier on especially coming off the bye then they could have been easily in Dreamhack. We talk about these teams that could have been to Dreamhack. Denial, Luminosity they had their opportunity. Everybody did yeah. well, everyone over in NA was expected to do very very well for themselves at Maybe Randoza's was the one that, uh, out of all of them, you expect to be near the bottom half. But all the other teams have opportunities. Let's have a look at Scary D, though. Scary D had some fantastic He played plays. really well in the solo lane in the first game and the second game. Playing the Ravana, he likes to play aggressive. Then when you give him gods like Ravana and Bologna, he's just going to run away with it. Especially Kiki coming back into the solo lane, still getting used to it. Playing gods like the Arachne, trying to get back into the laning phase. It's just not easy for him dealing with this Bologna. But it's a good chance to experiment, I guess, as Kiki as well. You know, you're trying to get back into it, try and find your form, play cards that you're used to playing, or, you know, you're comfortable on. And you're not really going to pick Arachne, I guess, if you're not comfortable. Arachne's not a terrible solo lane god, but it is against Bologna. It was just picked up a little bit too prematurely in picks and bans. So that's something that Envious as a whole needs to work on. They need to work on not only their game's plans, mm -hmm. but also their picks and bans. And then you also see some boost plays coming out here as well, who had a good game, but one and game two. The Zeus was on point, as was the Isis in the first game. And just good performance from LG all around to close out their season. They will finish in fourth position at the end of the season. Only one more set to go tomorrow, I believe, and that is Eager. Eager versus Denial. Eager versus Denial. It can't influence the standings at all in terms of where those teams can finish up. However, you can have a look at tomorrow as well. We've also got Panthera up against Leftovers tomorrow as well to finish things off. Leftovers, I believe, are still trying to fight for relegation spot or stay out of it, but it's still too close to call, I believe. It's don't forget, Giannis at the moment, there is availability for you to get a free Giannis skin this weekend. If you head over to esports.smitegame.com slash Facebook, type in there and you'll also tell us what 
platform you play on, and we will make sure you get a Yana skin. Not only that, there's a clothing sale of 75% off on multiple items of clothing, in terms of hats and t-shirts and hoodies as well, livebnfd.com. And not only that, we've also got one more thing to promote to you, DreamHack. Obviously, all these teams have been competing for it. We finally have the six teams coming out of Europe and North America going. Nine teams in total. You can get tickets over there at dreamhack.se. Totally. It's been a fantastic season. It has been a fantastic season, but despite this season going to be coming to a close, and even after DreamHack, there is going to be the Challenger Cup afterwards. Challenger Cup still going on right now, twitch.tv slash smitegame2. Head over there for all the Challenger Cup action and see which teams you may see in the future, or at least players. From everyone here, though, at Highway Studios, from myself and Tolly as well, you all take care. We'll be back tomorrow for the conclusion of the SPL.